I'm doing an axle flip on our 29-foot travel trailer. It's a 30-year-old trailer, uh, and it's pretty long, but I do want to take it hunting. And I have been down some dirt roads. I'm interested in. We're interested in doing some boondocking, and so I'm most of the way through, or I'm halfway through this process. You know, the essence of this is the axles sit on top of the springs, and we want them to sit under the springs. And they're bolted on with U-bolts in this uh, setup. And as you'll see in many other videos, there's a camber to that axle. In fact, I think that, uh, that angle will show you right there. So you can't just roll the axle underneath. Um, you need to install a new perch. You can see that perch on top of the axle. The original, the beginning, you can see out there, originally the perch is welded to the bottom of the axle. I found perches for $16 total for the four of them. This perch needs to sit on top of this axle. I have ground as you can see, I've ground the axle so that my welder will make good contact. I'm not a really great welder. This is a 110 volt tiny little well, wire, field, wire feed welder. But if you look carefully at what you're trying to accomplish, you'll see that that perch is actually clamped in place by everything that holds the axle to the springs. And so all I need to do is, is get a good tack on this so that it won't roll, so that it's even. It has to be installed even, um, correct uh, along this axis, correct along this axis. And uh, so I just used, you know, a set of, um, I actually put the trailer up on its own stabilizers because they're all, each of those is rated at 5,000 pounds. The total trailer dry weight is 7,500 or something like that. So I've got plenty of that. Um, I am using some jack stands underneath the axles. And all I've been doing is, is unbolting the spring, dropping the spring after undoing the axle and dropping the axle off from under the spring. Um, on this side I have the brake lines, which I did not cut and reattach like has been mentioned in some other videos. I just let them, uh, I just made sure there was enough slack and let them hang down. So I don't even need to show you what happens in the end. Again, that side's been done. This side's been done. I'm ensuring that these, uh, where this double spring mount, all of this rocker and flexible uh, and flex fitting fits up when I finally put the the uh, axle back together and I'll I'll show the end when that's all done but there's uh, no reason for me to go through every step of the process plenty of videos do that I'm just verifying that it can be done so here are a couple of fine points the uh, U-bolts came apart with an impact wrench, but if you've got the money, you may as well buy new ones. It's not that big a deal, I don't think expense-wise. And what I've got threaded back on fine, but they were a mess and I used a lot of penetrating oil to get them open and the wire brush and, and the impact wrench. And my impact wrench is an old electric impact wrench from my grandfather and it's not that great. So uh, you want to keep that in mind um, if it's not that big a deal for the money. Uh, I've got the I've got the uh, I've got the perch welded on the other side, so I'm down to one last perch to weld. And so, in order to get this axle underneath, I'm going to unbolt the spring right there. Here's something that I learned: the impact wrench takes the nut off the other side of that bolt, and I'll show you that bolt when I get it out. But I had put a big breaker on here and and used that to break this, to spin this, so that I could drive it out this way. That's not the right thing to do. These are splined. I'll show you when I get it out. They're splined, and there's also a plastic sleeve that runs through here. And, you know, especially on an older trailer, it makes sense to replace all those plastic sleeves. No, I did not do it this time. Um, I should have, and I can. 
Um, I also have a stripped nut on uh, one of these mounts, one of these leaf spring mounts, but um, my point being, when you get the nut pulled off this side, it's probably sensible to screw it part way back on to use a ball peen or to use a, I don't know how well that's going to show, or to use a, uh, I'm going to drive that out, or to use a brass hammer to drive those out. Um, rather than putting a big breaker bar here and spinning it to break it. So, there's the last shoe welded on. My welding is not terrible. It's not the best, but it's not terrible. There's the bracket that the spring fell out of. This is the bolt. Uh, I don't know how to focus perfectly, but take it from me, there are splines. And so when that bolt is driven back into this hole, there are splines here as well. I'm not supposed to hold it captive. It works and doesn't work. Anyway, again, that's what the finish looks like. This is what it all taken apart with the new perch and the parts looks like. Probably leave it at that, although I'll maybe add a road test.